Hey, the VA backlog seems to be getting better. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and today is the day when once about every three months, I pop on over to the, the Veterans Benefits Administration website to check out how the VA is doing, getting control of the disability claim backlog. You see, every Monday morning, the VA publishes a, a spreadsheet with an absolutely crushing amount of data. And while they do have their own little charts, I've been trying to fine tune a set of charts for us to use so we can keep an eye on them. The big takeaway for the end of June 2024 is well, they're doing a pretty good job of reversing the trend associated with that surge of claims that came as a result of the PACT Act in 2022. <laughs> for a while there, claims were just skyrocketing, but the, around the end of 2023, they peaked at about 1.1 million claims. Now, there's a couple of things to notice with this first chart. Just to get you oriented, the red bars represent the number of claims that are older than 125 days, and the green bars represent claims under 125 days. And when you stack them together, you can see an, an overall downward trend in the, the old red claims and the total number of claims. The work's not done, but at least it's headed in the right direction. The other thing to notice is that red dotted line, that represents the percentage of claims that are over 125 days. Back in 2015, and then again in 2022, the VA demonstrated the ability to quickly get this metric back under control. And it looks like we're seeing the same rapid improvement now. Now, one thing I like to check is the mix of initial claims to supplementals. And the reason I think this is relevant is because the current spike is really being driven by an increase in supplemental claims. It's not really people getting off of active duty who are driving the backlog, so much as changes to what the existing veteran community can claim. Again, I got this red dotted line, but now it means the percentage of supplemental claims. And I'll just say, it doesn't look like that mix is changing. The final chart I have for you focuses on those initial claims. And what I'm really interested in here is the split between what I would call simple claims with seven or fewer issues versus complex claims with eight or more issues. As you can see from this red line, the proportion of simple cases has gone down since the initiation of the PACT Act. That's a trend that hasn't reversed, and in fact, it might not ever go back. Now, I wanted to touch on a IG report that caused a big hullabaloo when it was first published back in May. That dealt with the fact that there were about 10,000 special mission herbicide claims, like Blue Water Navy and Nemer cases, that were experiencing really long delays. More than half of those claims had waited more than six months, and, and there were some that had been waiting for up to 15 months. In the report, the IG identified two factors that contributed to this. One factor had to do with the fact that these claims require processing by specialized teams, and it doesn't seem as though the, the workload distribution system was getting those claims routed to those teams. And the second factor seems to be that the, the ranking rules to determine the priority of individual claims, well, that too is contributing to these unintentional delays. All in all, what it seems was happening was that those specialized teams were still processing claims, but they were processing more mundane, routine claims. Now, you probably notice that I'm not exactly sounding the alarm the way that some media outlets did when this, this first broke. In part, the reason I feel this way is because, well, 10,000 claims is a lot, but it only really represents about a percent of the total workload. And while these claims were sitting around unfairly gathering dust, it's not like all work had stopped. And finally, while claimants were kind of getting jerked around because they were waiting and waiting for their claims to get adjudicated, that's not nearly as bad as getting jerked around because your claim was processed by the wrong group of people who didn't understand how to correctly process, and now you got to go through the whole appeals process to fix that. 
I mean, while it sucks to have to wait for your finding, it really sucks to have to appeal your finding. In fact, one of the things that almost always comes up in the comments section of these, these videos about the, the VA backlog is that people who are going through an appeal will point out that the appeal backlog is a much more frustrating pipeline to have to work through. So if you wanna understand how the VA appeal process works, how it's changed in recent years, and why it is so important to submit an initial claim that is fully developed, watch this video.